Hello, everyone. Welcome to Developing Palettes. I am Aaron Loomis. With me today is June Liu, Seth Geist, John McTavish. How you guys all doing? Doing well, man. Good. The band's back together, man. It's exciting. That's right. So today we are talking about the Stolen Throne Crook of the Crown Robusto. Cigar is 5 inch by 50 ring gauge. Comes out of the Aroma Jalapa factory in Nicaragua. Uh, wrapper is Mexican San Andres Maduro. Binders from Indonesia. Fillers from Indonesia and Nicaragua. It is by Noel Rojas. Uh, price point is $10.50, and the cigar was released in May of 2019. So with all that out of the way, June, what was your overall experience like with this cigar? Um, I was actually, first of all, pretty uh, happy to see Noel making a comeback and not just – because I think before this, I think he was doing, doing a bunch of those, like, sick fed little one-and-dones, right? Yeah. Um, so it was cool to, like, hear him – make like a legit, not like a legit line, but like, you know, make a, make a line that's outside of that realm of uh, bundles. Um, so, you know, the, the, the looks of the cigar was great. It had this, the band and the whole like pro thing on there. It was really neat. But in terms of the smoking experience, um, I was a little let down. Um, it was, it, it was pretty uh, intensely spicy, um, but it had like some nice baker spices and like uh, some rich, kind of like uh, roasted nuttiness to it but um i got quite a bit of this like charred black uh charred pepper note that came through in the uh, middle third and uh that really killed the profile for me um it just became just less and less enjoyable but uh not not for me gotta look forward to the the next noah release all right seth what were your overall thoughts yeah i mean listen i wasn't i wasn't impressed with impressed with the scar i thought it was a you know, crappy Mexican San Andreas offering, in my opinion. Um, it was really peppery, really like earthy, but not in a positive way. Um, medium, full strength and body cigar. It lacked in so many areas that it was one dimensional. Um, was not impressed with it. Wouldn't come back to it. All right, John, what were your overall thoughts? Well, I enjoyed it a lot more than my, my co-hosts here. Uh, which makes sense because I, I tend to have a sweet spot for uh, Pepper Ford cigars. And uh, I mean, I don't disagree with a lot of the stuff that said there, there was definitely some sort of charred or toasted earth that came through, I would say for me, almost exactly at the halfway mark. Um, for me, it, it didn't start out really intense. And I'd say the intensity of it really kicked in at the end of the third. If it had kicked into the beginning of the third, my score would be very different. Um, but that earth really carried the the last third, and it's just it's not a flavor that I particularly enjoy. Like it's just very palate coating. Um, but yeah, this cigar definitely started out with a big blast of pepper. I enjoyed it. There was some malty sweetness, orange citrus. Um, I I thought it was balanced. Uh, obviously pepper for it, but balanced in terms of the flavor complexity for the first third and most of the way through the second third. Uh, I had a great burn. Um, had a uh, little bit of a t little bit of resistant draw, but uh, overall, you know, pretty good experience. What about you, Aaron? Yeah, for me, the cigar was uh, very dark oak and earth focused. Uh, never really got beyond an average flavor profile for me. Um, you know, the identity of the cigar was really locked in. So if you like that dark oak and that earthiness that everybody's describing, I mean, that's you know, this is your type of a, a cigar. Um, you know, this is the first release from this brand. Um, they use Noel as the blender, at least for this one. I don't know if they're going to continue to stick with him. But, um, I mean, I, I would probably wouldn't come back to this cigar. But, you know, if they do other stuff with Noel, I'd be open to trying it because I like some of Noel's older stuff. So, um, yeah, not really a big fan of this one. But um, I'm, I'm open to trying other, other things. I know they just released something new. So I'll be interested in seeing if we try that out. All right, let's get the score. Start at the top with John at 6.52. June was next at 5.75. Seth gave it a 5.40, and I gave it a 5.35. So, John, how'd that 6.52 match up for you? Out, out on an island by myself. Totally makes sense, though, based on my scoring. Um, it's, an, it's, a, it's, a, it's an above average flavor profile, like just, I would say, just below the average good experience, but the construction here is good enough that I think it bumps it up from what would have been a low sixes to a mid sixes. Um, but that tracks for me. Who's next? All right, June, 5.75. Yeah, it looks good, sounds good. Looks like John's the only one that liked it, which should really tell you what, you know, if only 1% out of four liked it, how uh, average the cigar was. So. Crazy white people. <laughs> All right, it's uh, 5.40. I mean, listen, I, yeah, I thought it was one-dimensional. I wasn't, wasn't a big fan of it. Didn't like the profile. Um, it's, it's not my type of uh, Mexican San Andreas 
wrapper offering in it because it, it, they do change sometimes it's really good you know anytime you're using the indonesian and the binder and the filler you're not off to a good start can I, can I just say for a second I, I, I didn't look up the profile uh this is a very poor representation of mexican san andreas okay, so, so yeah it is. yeah it's no mexican question san no question yeah thank you yeah. see john's got a point there you go so my 5.35 matches up. I mean, it was the average flavor profile. Um, I had a fairly snug draw, so the construction wasn't perfect. So that's what kind of took into the low fives. Um, otherwise, it would have been, you know, mid fives. But, um, yeah, it's just a passable cigar. And, you know, price point, 1050, eh, you know, it's, you know, you can kind of takes you over, over the limit once you could pass the 999 threshold. But uh, any other final thoughts from you guys on this one? Band is Which, super cool, right? Yeah. Band. A band like a... I mean, it's kind of like, hey, uh, Caldwell did something cool, and we just had Game of Thrones, but I'm yeah. like a year late or something. So. Yeah, but like, I mean, what I was trying to say behind that is maybe Agador Salu should talk to these guys. You know? <laughs> oh, shots fired. Damn. What? That's great to Savage. I I'm, I'm excited <clears throat> for any time there's a new brand out. I mean, given the current marketplace, I, I have a sweet spot for new brands coming out. So I wish them well, and I hope they uh, – Hope they work really hard on the second release, and it's awesome. All right. If you're just catching this video on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to us. We'll also check out the full written review on the website, developingpalace.com. Follow us on the social media channels, and you can catch all of our review recaps on podcasts, so iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. Thank you for tuning in. We will catch you on the next one.